Hello nerd, today we are continuing and finishing with the Primarch's homeworld series. In the previous video we ended up with Khan and Chigoris. I have to remind you that we are going through the list in chronological order, meaning we are looking at the Primarch's homeworlds in the same order they were found. Having said that, this will be the last installment in the series, and later on I will combine all of the videos in one long format so that you can play it in the background while you paint your minis. So make sure you are subscribed, join the discord, and without further ado, let's dig in. There is only war. Conrad Kurz, the edgiest of all the Primarchs, was discovered on Nostramo, which was a desolate hive world, perpetually shrouded in darkness by its choked atmosphere and the feeble glow of its dying sun. Thick blanket of toxic smog veiled the planet in grey and black, only the privileged few could afford to have some light where they lived, while the masses languished in poverty and darkness, working till their last days in the planet's metalworks or chemical plants. Crime and corruption thrived under the corrupt rulers, with lawlessness reigning supreme and hope a distant memory. The planet had five major hive cities, each a self-contained industrial giant and snared by the perpetual night. Stone and iron structures clawed skyward amidst the labyrinth of alleys and bridges shrouded in smog. Nostramo's wealth lay in its abundant adamantium, mined at great cost of its inhabitants and traded lucratively with distant worlds. Yet this prosperity lined the pockets of the elite, while the masses, well, they suffered, their lives marked by diseases, poverty and despair. The people of Nostramo bore the physical scars of their environment, albinism was a common trait, and to many, their eyes had no irises. They endured lives of hardship and brutality, where strength was measured by violence and murder was an everyday occurrence. Gangs ruled with ruthless efficiency, from the slums, habitation stacks to the estates of nobility, Feudal titles and courtly pretenses masked the true nature of power in Nostramo, where rulers and criminals alike held sway over kingdoms built on sin and suffering. The heretical manuscript known as The Dark recounts the earliest memory of Conrad Kurz, who descended from the heavens in a crackling ball of light to the lightless expanse of Nostramo. His gestation capsule crashed into the dense cityscape of Nostramo's Quintus, carving a scar in the adamantium-laden crust of the planet. His arrival left the crater at pit, later feared and shunned by the inhabitants. People had theories on how the Primarch emerged, from swimming through molten metal to emerging through volcanic vents. Unlike his brethren, Kerez wasn't adopted by a human family, instead surviving in the brutal underhive of Nostramos Quintus. His genetically enhanced abilities quickly make him a formidable force, as he ruthlessly eradicated criminal elements and corrupted nobility, imposing a semblance of order upon the hive cities. Under Curse's name, Crime Plummeted, the name Night Hunter became synonymous with terror, whispered in the shadows as mothers warned their sons of his gruesome retribution. Through sheer brutality, Curse ascended as the benevolent dictator of Nostramos Quintus, ruling with an unpredictable blend of wisdom and vengeance. His relentless pursuit of justice, well, at least his version of justice, instilled efficiency and honesty, driving a surge in adamantium exports and fostering prosperity infused with fear. You can say what you want about Curse, but his methods were efficient if you don't look at how deranged they are. Angron, the angriest of all the Primarchs, was found on Nusiria. Within the forbidden deaths of the library Sanctus on Terra rests the Dread Tome, known as the Liber Malum. Its bloodstained pages provide insights of the descent into damnation of those whose names are written within. One of those names is Angron. He found himself stranded in a distant human world. His early life was just violence and oppression. Angron was found by a slaver in the mountains. He was hurt, bleeding, and surrounded by dead aliens, but still alive. It's unclear what kind of aliens they were, but something they might have been Eldar trying to kill Angron because they knew what he would do in the future. You know, because Eldar can see the future. The boy was taken to the palace Praxica in one of the planet's city-states, the Shah, where he was sold to the ruling clan. They saw his potential as a fighter and sold him to the biggest arena in the city. They named him Angron Talkir and gave him cybernetic implants called the Butcher's Nails. Angron became a fearsome warrior, leading his fellow slaves in a bloody rebellion against their oppressors. Their escape into the northern mountains 
marked the birth of the Eaters of Cities, a force that defied the might of Noceria's ruling elite. As Angron's legend grew, the Emperor of Mankind arrived at Noceria, witnessing Angron's defiance from orbit. The Emperor offered him leadership of the 12th Space Marine Legion and placed by his side in the Great Crusade. But Angron, bound by loyalty to his warriors and friends, refused, even though he knew he would die in the process, thus prompting the Emperor to intervene. Teleported from the battlefield, Angron watched from afar as his comrades were slaughtered, an act that would forever taint his relationship with the Emperor and everything else, well, everything else you already know. Before the arrival of Corex, the Moon Deliverance, which is his home world, was called Lysios. It orbited the forge world of Kiavar and was crucial for providing minerals to its hive cities and ruling Mechanicus tech guilds. This moon was kind of a garbage dump and a prison for Kiavar's worst criminals and those who just couldn't meet production quotas. Most of the inhabitants were slaves who worked in dangerous mines, constantly being watched by armed guards. Accidents, pollution, and just awful living conditions took a heavy toll on their lives. When the Emperor arrived, Korax told his daddy that he would join him only if the Emperor would take control and bring prosperity to the moon and Kiavar. And so that is what happened. And the last one, or last ones to be exact, Alpharius and Omegon. Well, it is quite obvious to say that we don't have a fucking clue about their homeworld. There are speculations going around all the time, and without a doubt, none of them are correct. Something that can potentially be closer to the truth is that at least one of them was raised on Terra, mostly by Malkador, because he was master of spies and assassins, so in essence, for such a Primarch he would be a really great teacher. Many people think that Omegon was the one raised on Terra, while Alpharius has a backstory which is a combination of all the backstories about him. Either it was a desolate world, space station, rebellious human fleet, or Zeno's world, we will never know. But we have at least one official version and it goes like this. According to the tale, Alpharius led a group of human star systems whose fleet, though smaller than the Imperial vessels, managed to defeat a Luna Wolf's battleship through clever tricks and ambushes. Horus, angered by this defeat, pursued them but fell into more traps, leading to an attack on his flagship, the Vengeful Spirit. During the chaos, an assassin infiltrated Horus's command chamber and murdered the fuck out of his Gestarian Terminators. Instead of fighting, Horus recognized the assassin as a brother, the missing Primarch. This newcomer, named Alpharius, claimed to have been traveling in that region of space for many years, but refused to reveal his planet of origins. What a fucking surprise. Despite this, Alpharius convinced his planets to join the Imperium with minimal conflict. Well, this sums up the last part of the Primarch's homeworld series, so out of all of them, which one was your favorite? And also, can you answer this question? Did the Primarch's homeworld mold every Primarch into what they became? Or was it other way around? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to join the Discord server, and if you enjoy my video, then leave a like and subscribe to my channel with the notifications on so you wouldn't miss my latest upload. And if you really want to support me, then consider becoming a member for just $1 by clicking on the join button right below the video title or visit my Patreon, link is in the video description. By doing so, you will gain access to members only polls to vote on upcoming video topics and you will get a pretty cool badge added to your name whenever you make a comment so you can even flex a bit. Also. You'll be featured as a supporter on my main channel page and every chapter master in all my video descriptions. With that in mind, I'll see you next time. Nerd!